Hey yo, Nate Barber here. Welcome to the Barber Shop. Come on in, make your presence known. You know how we do when you come into the Barber Shop. Give us a hi, a howdy, a how do you do. Let us know that you're present and accounted for. <clears throat> As you can see from the title, we are picking back up where we left off a couple of weeks ago. And the idea is that we're talking about how the Lord is our provider. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. And so we're going to continue talking about how he will provide. <clears throat> this will kind of turn the corner uh, after today as we go into the Christmas season. Good morning, Donna. Thanks for being the first one to comment, the first one in today. Welcome. As we enter into the uh, Christmas season, we'll kind of turn the corner. Next week, we'll begin to talk about how God's, uh, God's gift to us. And so I'm excited about, you know, talking about the birth of Jesus in the coming weeks. Matter of fact, I will be with you briefly on Christmas morning. I'll be with you on Christmas morning. Uh, so that's just a few weeks ag away. Um, have you done your Christmas shopping? Have you got your Christmas decorations up already? Hopefully you have. Many of you put them up uh, the day after Halloween, I think. <clears throat> All Saints Day, you figured might as well go into uh, Christmas 2020 is uh, <laughs> time to just, man, we need all the excitement, happiness we can get. So everybody put their Christmas decorations up early. So, you know, if you have, if you don't have them up by now, you are surely behind, uh, behind the rest of us. Good morning, mom. Good morning, Kiki. Good morning, Scott, Andrea, Chelsea, Christian. Chris, all right, man, come on in. You guys are uh, joining me this morning. We're talking about how the how God is a good provider. Could you use some provision? Could you use some of His provision in this season? <clears throat> Got extra expenses coming up. Um, if you're like my grandma, my grandma Barber, uh, you know, it didn't matter whether she had money or not. Uh, her grandkids are going to get Christmas presents, so uh, she would run up the Sears. The Sears charge card, as it were, and just to make sure we had all kinds of goodies, good Christmas sweaters and uh, good stuff. <laughs> I believe that's Jonathan on Harvest Church page. Heyo, Frederica, good to see you. So you got some, some extra expenses coming up at the end of the month here, and hopefully you will not have more month than money this month. Um, I believe we can tap into God's provision. So let's do a little review. Well, the queue has populated a little bit. Uh, don't have a lot of time to waste with pleasantries. Let's review a little bit. The Lord will provide. Good morning, Pastor Antoine. Sonia, good to see you. A couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago, we started talking about the Lord's provision in the way of Abraham and Isaac. You remember that, how the Lord had asked Abraham to sacrifice his son, Isaac, and he took him up on the mountain. And uh, as he lifted up his hand to slay his son, the angel of the Lord stopped him and uh, said, you know, because I see that you have not withheld your only son, um, you know, you're going to be, you're going you're gonna to have a lineage that will be a uh, bless. You're blessed to be a blessing. You're going to have a lineage that will, um, you're going to have an inheritance, all of these things. And I'm taking, I'm probably combining a bunch of different chapters there, but you get the gist. And the idea was that when he looked up, there was a, a ram caught in the thicket and Abraham said, the Lord will provide and name the place after the Lord's provision. Uh, good morning, my beloved Kristen. And so uh, that was the first, the first week. And then I talked to you about why, why I believe the Lord provides for us. Anybody remember any of those things, those reasons why the Lord provides for us? I'll give you a hint. Um, you just add an extra O to the name of God, not on the end, but in the middle, and you'll see that God is what? Good. He's good. And he loves us. That's one reason he provides for us because of his goodness. Yeah, we're his we're his kids. We're believers. We're his family. He wants to take care of his family. What father, what mother wouldn't want his uh want, want, wouldn't want their children to be well taken care of and well provided for. Good morning, Ruth. And so God is 
Uh, he is our heavenly father and he wants to provide for his kids. So he's good and he loves us. And so he wants to take care of every need that we have. The scripture says in Matthew 6 that he knows our needs even before we ask them. So why should we worry? Why should we fret? Why should we be concerned about tomorrow's needs? We should be concerned about the Lord. He has provided our daily bread and he's providing for us every single day because he's good, because he loves us. Good morning, Sally. All right, may seem a little repetitive. I heard this and I'll repeat it again because it's so true that repetition is the motor of learning. The more you hear something, the more you retain it and the more you learn it. And then to the point that you're gonna share it with someone else so that you've truly gotten it for yourself. All right, he's good and he loves us. That's the number one reason. Pastor Larry, good to see you, man. Number one reason the Lord provides for us. Number two reason that I gave you is that he, he wants us to be generous. Hey, Danny, he wants us to be generous. Why? Because we're made in his image. We're to be like him. If he's a generous God, then we should be generous people, generous children of God, right? We should be generous. And we see this all throughout the scriptures. Blessed to be a blessing throughout the New Testament we read to you a couple of weeks ago about the, the church at Macedonia, that even though they were experiencing deep famine and, and, and desperation in their, own, uh, in their own city, in their own region, they took up an offering for the church and uh, for Paul. And, and, and so God loves a generous, cheerful, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Good morning, PK. Uh, good morning, folks, as you're coming in. Sorry, I missed a few. Hey, 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 hey. Good morning, Deborah. There we go. Yes, Fredna, how are you doing today? So, he's good. He loves us. He wants us to be generous. And so, we should be looking. We should be looking for opportunities to be generous. Opportunities to be a blessing, shouldn't we? And I believe that there's three ways, three types, three three ways that he wants us to, to give. Um, what is our response? And this is really what it is. This is our response to God's goodness and his love for us is generosity. And we talked about this last week uh, over Thanksgiving that a, gener a grateful heart, excuse me, a grateful heart is a generous heart. You remember that? That when we're grateful, when we've received what the Lord has done for us, it's just a natural byproduct of that gratefulness that we are generous receive with one hand and we give with the other. And so, uh, again, we talked about this open hand principle. We live with an open hand. We give with an open hand. And uh, if, we're, if we're holding on tightly to what we have, then guess what? Our hand is closed. We can't receive what he has for us. And so we should live with an open hand so that whatever he puts into our hand can easily and just as quickly flow into someone else. We're blessed to be a blessing. All right. So what is our response to God's goodness? What is our response to God's love? What is our response to his rich generosity towards us? Number one, I believe this is a, a, a principle that's all throughout scripture. I believe that we should tithe, all right? I believe that we should tithe. Uh, I don't believe it's a controversial topic. I believe it's for the believer, for the child of God, we should be giving 10% of our income. Malachi chapter three, 10 through 12, bring all the tithes, he says, into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to take it in. Try it, he says. Put me to the test. Your crops will be abundant for I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes, your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe says the Lord of heaven's armies, then all nations will call you blessed for your land will be such a delight. So listen to this. You know, people think about, you know, when we talk about the tithe, we think and we, they think there, there's, there's this mentality that the church is trying to get something from you or that the Lord is trying to get something from you. Like he's squeezing every ounce of you out that he can. It's not the point at all. The point here is the Lord's trying to get, not to get something from you. He's trying to get something to you. He's trying to get something to you. Somebody type that in the comments 
for me. I heard Andy Stanley say this a number of years ago. I won't take credit for it. Uh, great revelation. The Lord isn't trying to get something from you. He's trying to get something to you. And you see that evident in this scripture about tithing. He says, hey, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Bring that 10% of your income, of your increase, of the increase of your crops and your, uh, the increase of your hands and the work of your hands. Bring that into the storehouse. And he says this, if you do, if you do, I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to contain it. He's going to open the windows of heaven over us so that we'll be blessed beyond measure. And why would we be blessed beyond measure? So that we can build up our storehouses and barns? No, so that we can have more than enough to give to his great work in the earth. Because we're not storing up. We're not storing up treasures on earth, are we? No, we're storing up treasures in heaven. We're Roth, moth, <laughs> Roth. Uh, yeah, get your Roth IRA. <laughs> Where moth and rust do not destroy. They don't destroy in heaven. So we are storing up treasures in heaven. And that's the thing. The Lord wants to try to get something to us. And so by way of the tithe, the tithe isn't about the 10%. The tithe is about trust. Okay? Everybody everybody, type that in for me. You guys are doing great. You're typing in my uh, my word there and, and share this out for somebody. They need to hear this. The tithe isn't about your tenth. The tithe is about your trust, okay? The tithe is about your trust. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to trust him to provide for you. And you do that by saying, Lord, my response to you, my response to generosity, your generosity is just to be obedient to your word and give a tenth of my income. And I know this, and I've seen this to be true, not only uh, in his word, but from my own experience, is that you can do more with the 90% of your income than you can with the 100%. I don't know. God's math is different. His math is different than ours. Can anybody here testify that to be true? Like, I don't know. Like so many times, we've, in our own life, decided to put God first. When the paycheck comes in, 10% right off the top to, uh, to God's work, all right? Through the local church, okay? Through our local church to the storehouse where you're being fed. And so we've committed to do that. And time after time, when things look like they're tight, look like we're not going to make it, he always comes through. And we have testimony after testimony. Hopefully, I'll have time to share that with you today. <laughs> Ruth, come on. Come on, ma'am. His math is different, and I'm thankful he doesn't do Common Core. Yes. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, I don't understand his math, but it works. It works. And it works better for, and it works out for my good. Okay. So that's number one is that our response to God's goodness, his love, and his generosity towards us is that we tithe. That's, that's it. That's tithe. <laughs> that's right. Number two, we give over and above. Now, I'm, I'm talking about generosity here, okay? So the tithe is there. The tithe's a given, okay? The, the, the tithe is unquestionable, okay? It's, it's uh, non-debatable in our house. The tithe, it's there, right? Yeah, the tithe is already in our paychecks. It's up to us to give it. That's right, Sally. So the second thing, though, is to give over and above. And this is where it gets exciting, okay? The tithe, it's about my trust. It's about me trusting that he's going to continue to provide, that I can do more with the 90 than I can with the 100. <laughs> over and above. Listen to this here, okay? Uh, one of my favorite passages in all of Scripture is 1 Timothy chapter 6, 17 through 19. All right, I'm gonna read the New Living. Teach those who are rich in this world, whew, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in what? In their money. Don't trust in their money, but, or, or which is so unreliable. And that's a, a, a number one reason why we shouldn't trust in our money because it's unreliable. Teach them not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God who richly, again, the, the flip side of this is God's trying to get something to you. Who richly, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. 
He's not trying to take from you. He's not trying to steal joy from you. He's not trying to make you do without. He richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so, they, so that they may experience true life. Over and above the tithe. So even beyond the 10%, he wants us to be ready to be generous on every occasion, to share with others who are in need. So that means that not only do I bring the tithe to the storehouse, to my church, but I should have an over and above fund. All right, if you're a Dave Ramsey person, put a little extra cash in an envelope that's not for you, but title it over and above. Okay, if you've got to budget it out, whatever. Over and above so that you're ready when the Lord prompts you to give to that person in need. And this is exciting, you guys. This is the exciting part. I've been the recipient of people's over and above, over and above generosity. I've also seen God's provision in the way of uh, giving over and above. Here's the deal. I want to, tell, to share a story with you. Early on, uh, my first real kind of full-time job in ministry at, uh, at Good News, out of, out of college, I went to uh, North Greenville College, graduated with a degree in Christian studies. Immediately uh, out of college in, in uh, May of 2002, I went to work for Good News Church in Augusta, Georgia as their youth pastor and, uh, you know, all kind, wore all kinds of hats there and grew in all kinds of ways. So grateful for my time there at Good News Church. Um, many, many of our Good News folks are, are watching today, so thank you for, for tuning in and a, a special welcome to you. One Sunday morning, I am uh, in service there, and tell me uh, if this rings true for you, if you've ever had this happen to you. But I'm sitting in service, and it's time for offering. Um, I had already given my tithe for that whatever two-week paycheck period. I'd already given my tithe, all right? So that's a given. Again, the tithe is, to, for us, it's, it's non-debatable. It's, it's a done deal. It comes right off the top. I'd already given the tithe. But you know what? The Lord, the Holy Spirit began prompting me a little bit. And uh, he prompted me to give $100 extra over and above. $100 over and above. Have you ever been here? Has the Lord ever prompted you in your heart to give more than you were expecting to give on, a, on any given Sunday or Wednesday or any other day for that matter? Have you ever been there? Can I get a witness? So he prompts me to give $100. Now, keep in mind that I'm young, and $100, that's a lot of money. $100, to me, $100 is still a lot of money today in 2020. In 2002, how many of you know $100, it, it, uh, it seemed to be even more money back then? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to be, uh, you know, kind of like, oh, back in my day kind of thing. $100 used to, you know, coats didn't cost five cents or anything like that. But the thing is, it was still a lot of money. And so to me, you've got to, you've got to answer that question. Am I going to obey? Am I going to be obedient to this prompting of the Lord to give over and above? I've already given. God, I've already given. But keep this in mind. You got to understand, he's not trying to get something from you. He doesn't want your money. What does he want? He wants your trust. He wants your trust. Somebody type that in the comments for me. He doesn't want my money. He wants my trust. He doesn't want my money. He wants my trust. That's right, Deborah. You already got that in there. He wants us to trust him. So what do I do? Well, I like to say that I'm obedient every time. I'm not obedient every time instantly, but this time I got it right. Okay? So I write the check, $100, put it in the offering. <laughs> uh, a little reluctantly, I might say. Uh, again, that's a lot of money. Right after the service, this is, this is God's faithfulness. Right after the service, somebody walks up to me and gives me a gospel handshake. You know what a gospel handshake is? A gospel handshake uh, is, is when, uh, and we call it a gospel handshake because it's good news when that person shakes your hand, but they've got like a little secret stash of cash right on the inside of their palm. 
and they and they shake your hand and then there's that slip that exchange of money that they don't want anybody to see you know kind of under the table uh gospel good news handshake and that was certainly good news to me so i'm like oh god bless you thank you so much and and stick the money in my pocket right because you got to be discreet <laughs> you got to be discreet about that right so stick it in the pocket i'm like oh man that's that's so cool man just god god's awesome get in the car getting ready to go home go to lunch whatever and i remember i've got this gospel handshake money in my pocket so i reach in there and i pull it out guess how how much it was just guess somebody somebody throw it in there i'll give you time single bill one single bill you guys guess how much how much money how much money would be nice for you in a gospel handshake but how much money did i get that day in that gospel handshake let's see it you might want to put a dollar sign um emoji Ah, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Mom, Sally, $100, $100, exactly. You guys are tracking with me. And to me, again, it wasn't about the money. It was about, that's right, you guys are with me. A $100 bill, you guys. A fresh hondo, a Benjamin, right there in that gospel handshake. And it was me, I pulled that out, and then I immediately, st tears start coming down my, my face. And it was one of those things that, that God was saying, you know what, I'm worthy of your trust. I am faithful. You can trust me. When I prompt you to give, you won't do without. Woo, come on, somebody. You're, when I prompt you to give, you're not gonna do without. You're not gonna do without. He's not trying to get something from you. I'm gonna hammer this a little bit. <laughs> He's not trying to get something from you. He's trying to get something to you. All right, so that's over and above, all right? You know what? I would love to be a a reverse tither. You know what I'm talking about? A reverse tither is one who gives 90% and keeps 10%. Come on. Would that be amazing? That would be amazing. Lord, help me get there. That would be incredible. But you can inch your way up there by giving over and above. All right. The last one, okay? The last one. We talked about the tithe. We talked about over and above. <laughs> if you're with me, stay with me, okay? The third one is this. It's called extravagant generosity. Type that in for me. Extravagant generosity. We're getting radical here, you guys. All right. The, the tithe is about your trust. Over and above is about your trust and, and about him getting more to you so that he can give more through you. All right. But extravagant generosity. Whew. Extravagant generosity. Let's talk about this for a minute. And this is this is how this is where the the early church was built on extravagant generosity, guys. Extravagant. This early church was built on this. Acts chapter four, um, verse thirty-two. And I'm reading from a new Bible today. Give a shout out to my Nini and Papa who gifted this to me. And y'all pray for my family because um, Nini and Papa just moved to Martha Frank's assisted living facility. And so it's been a difficult season for, for my family, but um, man, so grateful for that legacy of faith in my family. And uh, this was a Bible that they had, uh, one of their Bibles, and it has been gifted to me. So I'm gonna read out, out of it today and try not to cry. Acts chapter four, verse 32. It says, all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There were no needy persons among them. Here it is. For from time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had as, as he had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostle called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. And if you've been listening to PK's thought for the day for the last couple of weeks, you've heard more about Barnabas. Barnabas was one of those people who gave extravagantly. He sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. This is extravagant generosity. Like when you sell a major possession and you bring the sale of it to the church or you give... Uh, so, something of great value to you away, 
That's extravagant generosity. And I got a testimony of extravagant generosity. Can you hang with me a little bit longer? <clears throat> I got so many testimonies of extravagant generosity. And this, I'd say all of this, not to bring attention to me, but to bring glory to God, okay? <laughs> hey, Kenley. To bring glory to God, okay? I, I wanna tell you this, it, and this isn't about Nate Barber. This is, and this isn't about the barbershop. This is about God's great generosity towards us and the fact that when you obey him, he rewards your obedience extravagantly as well. So, uh, man, which one do I wanna tell? Man, my family has inspired me to give extravagantly on occasion in obedience to the Lord's promptings. A number of years ago, uh, I don't even remember the year, so I'm not, not going to try to, to tell you about that. But a number of years ago, the Lord prompted me to give away a car. I had a, uh, what year was that? 2000 Dodge Dakota, and I uh, paid for it with my own money. One of the first, uh, you know, I won't say first, but uh, I paid for a number of cars myself, you know, used vehicles. Um and so I had this Dodge Dakota that I had paid for with my own money. And the Lord, uh, after a few years having it, driving it, he told me to give it away. I was a young man in need, and the Lord told me to give away my truck. How many of you would say that's extravagant? That's a big ask. God, that's a big ask. And so for me, I struggled with it for a while. It started as a kind of a prompting, kind of a, um, you know, a thought and sometimes you think those thoughts are like, <laughs> those thoughts are, you, you question them, is that from God or is that from the devil? And you're so you're like, get behind me, Satan. I ain't giving away my car. But how many of you know that the devil's never gonna prompt you to be generous? <laughs> he, he's, he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He's never gonna prompt you <laughs> to be generous. And God said, yeah, did God really say, exactly. Did God really say give away your truck? That's exactly what he would do. He would try to talk you out of it. Well, it was a good four months before, it was a good four months before I, I was obedient to that. And the, the, the kicker, the, the thing that prompted me over the top was I actually told my wife about it. Hey, Kristen, I told my beloved wife about it. And she says, if the Lord told you to do something, what are you waiting for? <laughs> you need, you guys need a spouse like that. You guys need a spouse that would confirm the word of the Lord to you and say, what are you waiting on? Do it. If he tells you to do something, do it. But, 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 but what are we going to do? But, 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 what am I going to drive? But, 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 how am I going to get around from place to place? Did he tell you to do it? Do it. So, man, one of the greatest joys, one of the greatest joys of giving in my life was when I gave this young man that truck. Wow, what an experience. Awesome. Well, it was, a, it was an amazing teaching season for me that the Lord was teaching me some things in that generosity because I gave away the vehicle and uh, immediately, uh, man, this is a long story. Can you hang with me for a few more minutes, okay? And then we'll sing a little bit. Give me about 10 minutes, okay, guys? You with me? Because you want to hear the end of this. Great thing to be obedient to God. But the Lord rewards, he's a rewarder of those who believe in him and did diligently seek him, right? All right, I got a lot of likes. You guys are hanging with me. Thank you. So uh, immediately afterwards, my, my mom who's watching uh, and, and my stepfather, they had a, another Dodge Dakota and they weren't using it. They had three cars at the time. Yeah, good job, Kristen. They had three cars, and so they they were they, they said, "Well, you can borrow you can borrow this truck until you get something." So for a season, I drove I drove that truck until uh, one one day again. My wifey, I think she was doing a, a lesson for children's church, and one of the main tenets, the main points of this lesson was was uh, make room for a miracle, make room for a miracle. And so she 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 said to me, "Hey, Nate, are we making room for a miracle here in our life?" You know, you're driving this borrowed truck. Like, maybe you're not in faith for a vehicle. So I believe that it, you reap what you sow. So I believe that I sowed a vehicle and that miraculously God was gonna provide a vehicle and transportation for our family. You believe that? It's a law. 
the law of sowing and reaping, the law of seed, time, and harvest. Every seed produces after its own kind, right? So what did I do? I said, uh, you know, mom, thank you for your generosity. Larry, thank you for your generosity. But you know what? I'm going to make room for a miracle. You guys, I don't need the truck anymore. Just gave the truck back. So then I began walking to work. Thankfully, we lived, uh, man, just a few blocks away from the church where I worked at that time. And so I began walking. Walking got a little old. And so Kristen had a bike, a purple bike. And uh, so I began riding a girl's, a lady's bicycle. No shame in this game, you guys. <laughs> uh, I began riding this girl's bicycle until one night after a youth service at church. I was riding the bike home and uh, trying to impress some, some students, some onlooking students with my biking skills. And so I tried to jump the curb and completely wiped out. The gears of the bicycle broke. I wiped out in the middle of the road, <laughs> trying to cross this road. So I wrecked the bicycle. The bicycle's out of commission. So there I am, back to walking again. And uh, every every time, every I used that, that walking time to confess my faith, uh, to complain to God for a little bit. Uh, you know, God, you told me to give this away. Where are you at? Kind of thing. You ever been there? Would you know it that uh, on the other side of my obedience was the Lord speaking to someone else to be extravagantly generous as well. And so I get an email one day and said, uh, hey, what can we pray for you about? Kristen responds and says, hey, we, we need, we're, we're looking for a vehicle. Um, Nate wants a, a new truck or SUV or something like that. And they, 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 they send an email back and say, well, we believe that the Lord has been dealing with us to give you our 2008 Ford Explorer. Would you want it? <laughs> uh, yes. The answer is yes. A big capital Y-E-S. We would want it. That's what we've been waiting for. And uh, through a series of events and making them making arrangements, it was a couple of months. And we, we, we got a new uh, 2008 Ford Explorer completely paid for. Matter of fact, they were still paying payments on this vehicle and kept it in their name until the, they finished the payments out for the, for the next year and paid the insurance on it. The whole deal, it was miraculous. It was supernaturally miraculous. And the other side of their obedience is an even more miraculous story that I don't have time to tell you, but uh, suffice it to say that God is faithful and that when he tells you to do something, whether it's the tithe, which he's already spoken to everyone to do, so do it, whether it's being generous over and above or whether it's being extravagantly generous, be obedient to him. Be obedient to him. I hope that my testimony of God's goodness and love to us and how he's used us to be generous would inspire you to respond in kind. You know, um, and again, this isn't about tooting my horn. It's about, <laughs> because in all honesty, guys, I've missed it so many times and my obedience was delayed at best. And so he responds to, here's the deal. It's this cycle of response, okay? He's a giving God because he's good and he loves us. He wants us to be generous. Our response to his generosity, his goodness, and his love is to give in these three ways, to tithe, to give over and above, and to be extravagantly generous. And guess what? In God's response, reward that generosity. It's a continual loop of God's generosity in our lives. Amen, amen, amen. If this blessed you, share it out. We're gonna sing about God's goodness as we wrap up. Again, I told you give me 10 more minutes, so we may go to 940. Thanks for hanging with me. I love this song. We're gonna sing this on Sunday. And uh, I love how they added some verses to this and talks about the goodness of God. Let's sing this together. Amazing love that welcomes me the kindness of mercy that bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving God you're so good <laughs> God you're so Behold.
Behold the cross, age to age. Behold the cross, age to age. And hour by hour, the dead are raised, the sinner saved. The work of your power. Father, I thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for how you've blessed us, how you favored us. Oh, if you didn't give us anything but your son, you gave us your very best. But God, you, uh, if you gave us your son, Romans 8 would tell us, 832. If you gave us your son, if you didn't withhold him, how much more will you with him freely give us all things? And so, Father, I thank you for your rich generosity towards us and your son, towards us and your many blessings of uh, material things. God, your blessing of family and friends, those things we experience and, and so many times take for granted. Father, I thank you for that. Father, I thank you for my friends who are watching. I just pray your blessing upon them. Father, I pray that they would respond to your goodness and your love and your generosity towards them with generosity towards others. Father, may we be obedient to give the tithe. May we be obedient to your promptings to give over and above and to be extravagantly generous. And Father, all in all, it's about reaching people it's about bringing more people into your family. And so, Father, we pray for those who do not yet know you. We 
pray that they would open their eyes to see, God, that you would reveal yourself as Father, as Creator, as Savior, and as Lord to those folks. Even now, there, there may be some who are watching who have yet to call upon the name of Jesus. And so the scripture says that if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Maybe something I've said today uh, through the Holy Spirit has prompted your heart to call upon Him. So I just want to lead you in a simple prayer that say this, that, uh, Father, forgive me of my sins. I know that I'm a sinner and I need your help. I believe that you gave your son Jesus for me, that he died on the cross, that you raised him from the dead three days later. And Jesus, I confess you as my Lord. I accept you and you accept me. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, um, and let us know. Let us know in the comments. Reach out to us via message uh, at Harvest Church here. And so we want to get some materials in your hands to help you grow in your faith and uh, help you dis be discipled and become a true follower of Jesus. So thank you guys for tuning in today. I want to remind you that we've got more devotions tomorrow morning with Pastor Xavier, The X Factor. And we're still loving our neighbors walking. If it's cold, drive around your neighborhood and pray. Reach out to people. Look for opportunities to be generous this week, okay? We're going to continue talking about how we can be generous, how we can receive God's gift uh, as we enter in the Christmas season here in the next few weeks. And looking forward to uh, sharing more uh, about that with you next week on The Barbershop. Again, thanks for watching. If this blessed you, share it out and uh, let it bless somebody else. You guys have a great weekend. See you Sunday morning.